Boom. Welcome, friends. My name is Frederick von Weiss, and thank you for consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and do tech good. We're really excited to have a kind of pre-show of DevFest Florida. Uh, if you don't know DevFest Florida, it is coming up this Saturday, uh, November 16th, and it's a all-day conference and we are going to be part of it. We're going to be interviewing most to all of the presenters this year and we couldn't be happier and more honored to be part of the event. And speaking of which, we have two of the speakers with us today. Let's go ahead and get to know them. We'll go uh, alphabetically first name. So Faisal, if you don't mind introducing yourself and saying who you are. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm Faisal. Um, I live in Toronto and I'll be at DevFest talking about Flutter and machine learning. I'm a Google developer expert for Flutter uh, and I've been, you know, just building mobile apps and uh, building backends, all sorts of stuff, full stack for a long, long time now. And it's your turn. Um, hi, my name is Loyani. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, and um, I'm also a Google developer expert in Angular. I'm also going to be speaking at DevFest Florida this weekend. Um, my session is going to be about um, real-time applications with Angular and Firebase, how you can leverage both of these technologies to build um, extremely uh, real-time applications. And um, I'm originally from Brazil, um, but I'm living in Florida as well. So I'm from the area. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, from what I understand, you're in Tampa, is that right? That's correct, yes. Oh, cool. How long have you been in Tampa? Uh, a year and a half. Oh, what do you think of it? Um, I like it, except for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is perfect. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Let, let me ask you now. Are you are you communicating that you do not care for all the hurricanes uh, that we're potentially getting, or is it the actual heat that you don't care for? Um, I actually didn't have an experience with hurricanes yet. Well, we had Dorian, but it didn't hit uh, Tampa directly, so that yeah. was good. Um, and but for now, just the weather. We'll, we'll see about the hurricanes in the future. <laughs> <laughs> now it's funny we more like the heat. Go ahead, Faisal. I, I was asking if she doesn't like the heat. Um, I actually don't, although I'm from Brazil, but I, I, I really don't like like hot weather. I prefer like now as we have like the, the fall winter in Florida for me is perfect. I see. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I much prefer that too. Now on the other side of the coin, I was just speaking to Faisal offline about his weather. He's in Toronto and he has, uh, what did you say Faisal? It's, uh, six degrees Fahrenheit? Six degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's really cold right now. <laughs> I, I'm dressed like an Eskimo. Yeah, I you know I, I'm I'm also a, a a cold weather human being. I'm from Jersey. Um, don't hold that against me, but I prefer the cold weather myself. So I I I, I would uh, probably enjoy the six degrees over the ninety. I would trade you any moment. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we talk a little bit about DevFest? Well, first off, we should probably say uh, a few things about the conference. If you want to know about the conference, it's DevFestFlorida.org. It is again going to be this Saturday, which is November 16th. It's a all day conference. Um, there are uh, a, a, a large array of speakers uh, talking from everything from Angular, Flutter, Android, uh, App, App Script, UX, machine learning, Firebase, cloud, web, and many other technologies. And not only are there local speakers, but there's speakers from all around the country, all around the world. There is a large pool of talented people that are going to be here, and it's an amazing event, and uh, it's, it's a great place to network to. So I highly suggest that you come down, check it out. It is, is worth the tickets. Uh, again, that's devfestflorida.org. Uh, so why don't we talk a little bit about both of you, uh, and again, we'll go first name alphabetical. Faisal, again, so you are in Toronto's. Uh, what brings you to DevFest? How did you get involved with DevFest, first of all? 
So as part of being a Google developer expert, I try to reach out and try to speak wherever I can um, and just kind of spread awareness about Flutter or other technologies, really. Sometimes I'll talk about Android or machine learning or whatever. And so that's really how I got involved with Deaf as Florida. I, I try to go to warm places also during the winter. And so this is a good excuse to just like go to a warm place, uh, you know, and just enjoy. Nice. Uh, I could appreciate that. And uh, again, uh, please forgive me if I, if I'm brutal with, with your name, uh, Loian. Loani, but that's okay. Loani, Loani. I, I got it now. Thank you. Loani, what about you? Um, and, and again, because I know both of you have spoke at DevFests before, if I'm correct. But Loani, how did you get involved in uh, this one in particular? Um, since I moved here last year, and uh, I wanted to get in touch with the local tech, uh, the local communities as well. And uh, I believe that DevFest is a wonderful opportunity to do that. You can meet new people, you can meet amazing speakers. So we have people from all over the country um, uh, flying to, to Florida um, to share their knowledge with, with us. And also it's a great opportunity for networking. So you can get to know people, learn new things. Maybe you can attend to a session that um, you, you're not in touch with that particular technology, but after the session, you may be, be interested in that. So um, I, I just love doing that. So I, I love going to, to conferences and, and Def, DevFest Florida for being a, a, a conference that is here in Florida is even better. So it's just one hour drive away. <laughs> Oh yeah, exactly. That's not so bad. And I know, Loani, you actually speak at a, a few different conferences, correct? Yes. Um, as, uh, whenever I have the opportunity and whenever I can do that as well, um, I, I try to go to as many conferences as I can. Um, lately, I'm trying to just slow it down a little bit because, <laughs> because of work and also other projects. But whenever I can, I, I try to go. Yeah, I see that you also published a ton of content. You put out a lot of, you have a lot of Angular videos uh, and some other things, and you have books. You're, uh, you look like you're very um, proactive with uh, putting your knowledge out there. Um, yeah, it's something that I like to do a lot. Um, when I started working with technology, um, mostly of the things that I've learned uh, was from people that were in the community. So I tried to volunteer at conferences. So I had opportunity to, uh, be, you know, be close with the speakers and, and talk to them and also learn from, from them. Um, and also whenever I needed, well, um, I was a little broke when I was in college, I believe we're all our one students. Um, so, uh, reading blog posts, we didn't have YouTube back then, but reading blog posts, uh, it was how I learned. So it's also a, a way for me to, um, kind of give back to the community as well. So whenever I, I can, I also try to share a little bit of what I learned. Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> just to touch on that with a uh, flavor of brevity, I, I'm, I am also a little jelly of uh, uh, the kids growing up these days, the kids, uh, because we, we didn't have that when I was growing up. I wish I had some kind of resource to say, oh, just watch a video on this. There's a video on everything. It's uh, it's great. Not to say that you know anything against them, but yeah, that's that's a great tool. It's it's so nice what we have now to be able to contribute and uh, a tool to learn from. And I love it when I hear people that are uh, within that publisher mindset that are putting out stuff not just because oh, it wasn't it great to be able to put stuff out there, but because it's it's your passion and it sounds like it's your passion too. Yeah, I love doing that. It's just, um, I've been doing that for 10 years now since I started my, my first blog post. Um, so yeah, I, I just love doing that. It, it's part of me now. <laughs> That's so cool. Now, where, where are you originally from? Are you originally from Brazil, but where in Brazil? Um, I'm from a very small state called Espírito Santo. Okay. Where, um, where, where is that within Brazil? Like I could picture Brazil in my mind. Um, so it's kind of the coast is between uh -huh. uh, Rio. So it's above Rio and below Bahia. So these are very, um, they, they are very well-known states, especially Rio because of the carnival and Bahia is also a great state um, to go to in February or March during carnival as well. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So you probably speak Portuguese as a, as a language there, right? Yeah, it's my first language. Yeah, that's so cool. So what brought you over to the States? 
Um, so I've been working for uh, Citibank for a while now, almost nine years. Um, so I was working first in Sao Paulo, and then there was an opportunity to be transferred to the U.S. And then uh, Tampa uh, was the, the campus that they were hiring. So I took the opportunity came and came here. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. How exciting to just travel and be in a different country and do what you love doing. Uh, uh, it's so neat. Yeah, so, it, it's, it's uh, nice because you can also like learn a, about a new culture. Um, and also try to improve my English skill. So that was like a bonus. <laughs> yeah, it's always so advantageous when we could um, immerse ourselves in some other culture to get a little bit more context on not only the world, but how we look at ourselves and what we what we do and the way we behave and the interactions of our everyday within our um, normal um, usual, if you will, uh, where we're from, uh, that, 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 um, uh, that, that realm. So, yeah, that's so neat. Uh, it, I'm sure that definitely reflects within what you do. So why don't we, uh, why don't we jump into a little bit, speaking of what you do, uh, of both what you're, uh, what you both are uh, talking about. Let's, let's, uh, first go with you, Faisal. What is your, and I know you have two talks, so why don't we go into, um, I guess pick one randomly and let's 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 discuss that a little bit. Cool. Uh, so the first one I'm talking about is um, Flutter. I'm building cross-platform apps with Flutter, and this is a talk I've given a couple times before. And each time I kind of learn something uh, from the talk before, retrofitted. There's always new development on Flutter, so each talk is a bit newer, I guess. And so it's really about what I try to do is I try to empower the audience into understanding what Flutter is and uh, not giving them a dry tutorial of ABC, this is how you do something, but more so here's why you should like Flutter and this is why you should use Flutter. So I kind of show them like a demo reel of sorts uh, talking about all the cool things you can do with Flutter once you go home, right? And so that usually gets them excited enough uh, that they actually do go home. And a lot of times I do hear back uh, via Twitter or email that they built their first Flutter app that weekend, right? Uh, because it, just giving them that courage, I guess, to show them that it's actually not that challenging and it's actually, you know, easy enough if you just spend a couple days on it. I love that. I remember we discussed, uh, I think it was the last Dev Fest with you about some of the um, reasons why one might go with Flutter over something like uh, React Native. And I've, if memory serves me right, one of the things that you pointed out was the value of um, the way Android, for example, has different kinds of ways, uh, different flavors, basically, depending on who puts their stuff on top of it. So you use an example like a button in iOS will always look like that button. But within React, you might have a button that looks completely different from your Samsung phone to a different phone uh, within right. Android. Do, do you mind uh, just briefly touching on that yeah. a little bit? Because I think it's so powerful. Yeah, so I mean, the way Flutter works is if you've ever played Unity games, think about it in an abstract way. Flutter is just Unity for apps, mm. right? And so the Flutter team took that same concept and they draw a viewport, uh, which is a native Android view and a native iOS view. And inside that view, uh, they draw the buttons and animations and everything around 60 frames per second. And so what that gives you is this consistent uh, quality and deployment across all devices, uh, regardless of um, you know, the speed of the device or the manufacturer or anything. And so a lot of times uh, what really larger companies who come to me for some consulting uh, tell me is that they've tried to do React Native and it turns out it's a lot of work to account for different form factors on Android and making sure that the app looks great uh, because they, they have to, they can't have possibly all these phones to test on. But with Flutter, more or less, they're guaranteed that their app's gonna look the same. You know, with the exception of some wild screens like, you know, dual screens or whatever, most phones have a fixed aspect ratio. Uh, and so they kind of just worry about the best phones and they know that their app's gonna run fine on the rest. Yeah, I love that. That's that, that's such a good point. Um, I, I think it's possibly one of those things that we don't hear about right away when we 
talk about Flutter, yeah. um, for the people talking about Flutter, um, and think about uh, how, how that works. That's, yeah, that's very enlightening. You know, I love that. You know what, you, you know what it is? Uh, everything old is new again. This yeah. is exactly like uh, Flash, right? And the promise of Flash was you just did something once and it would run on all devices. All fine, the same, right? yeah. All the same. Flash's technology had an inherent issue where because it was a plug-in infrastructure, it was being hacked every day. Uh, and then uh, Apple came around and just killed it. And so the, um, this is just taking that concept and applying it again, but doing it correctly and doing it with open standards in an open source way. Uh, and you have some pretty powerful players backing it. Uh, so obviously Google created it, but then you have a lot of big companies like Alibaba and um, actually I can't remember the other company's name, but there's a lot of major players using Flutter um, to just rapidly develop their applications. And so it's it, it's basically Flash done correctly, uh, properly again. I love that. I wonder if Macromedia had that idea in their head when uh, they, they thought of uh, Flash. You know, I'm sure they did because, you know, Adobe even eventually did Adobe Air, right? And I remember oh, yeah. doing Adobe Air uh, just before they eventually got killed, but it was the idea that now you can take your desktop Flash apps and Flex apps and bring it to mobile. Right, and it was the same concept where it was a flash player running on mobile, and they would control the drawing engine. The problem was it was closed source; it was very bulky, and really, it was too far ahead of its time. Uh, the devices, like the phones, were really slow back then, and flash wasn't optimized for mobile, and so it consumed a lot of battery. There's a lot of issues. So now it's being done correctly. Yeah, it's so interesting. You could definitely take lessons from history, I guess, in any uh, way you want to take them, any sure. vertical, any idea, and pull some things and uh, go, yes, you know what, what let's, you, let's do something like this. I love that. So why don't we talk about then your uh, other presentation, which is uh, machine learning for everyone. Now, everyone. yeah, everyone. Everyone? Everyone. Okay. All right. So why everyone? What, what does that mean? You know, I'm going to bring my mom to it. Everyone's going to watch this. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so what it is, is, you know, a lot of times I've gone to a lot of machine learning uh, talks and they kind of go through a tutorial. Uh, you know, usually it's the handwriting tutorial or usually they build a classifier or something. But people leave thinking that machine learning is very easy. And then they go home, they search up some tutorial and they realize that there's a whole slew of uh, information that they don't understand. And then they kind of like regress back and they're like, well, I don't really understand it. I need a PhD for it or whatever. And so I've seen this cycle happen a lot. It happened with me. It happens with anyone I've spoken to. And so what I've done is kind of distill the information down and doing the same thing that I do with my Flutter talk where it's not so much about the technical details. It's more about the concepts and kind of intuitively understanding what these concepts are in the 40 minutes. And then giving you enough information and enough resources for you to go and get started learning machine learning, right? So that's really what my machine learning for everyone talk. It's everybody's talk about. Yeah, I, I, it's funny you say that. I remember uh, again another another thing I could pull from uh, from last time we spoke was you talked about your presentation and how you had this epiphany about the best way to give a presentation, and you thought about it as it's a movie trailer and present it as a movie trailer. Some of the highlights, some of the things that you could learn, get people excited about it because you're not going to, it's not a workshop, it's a presentation. You're exactly. not going to be able to get people from A to B within that amount of time, but you could certainly get them excited, illuminate their uh, concepts of what something is and get them to a point where they're uh, going to be active on it. Exactly. You know, I started giving talks when I was 18. I'm 29 now. And so I've done a lot of talks. And my first talk was actually a uh, Adobe Flash Air talk. And I had, had, to, had a lot of slides and it was detailed code and stuff. And then from that time on, I tried a bunch of different things to see what works and what doesn't work. And really just looking at movie trailers, I'm a big movie fan. I realized that movie trailers are the best thing to model a talk after because it gets me in the, it gets me to pay to go to watch a movie. And what I want people to do when they actually attend my talk is after the talk, actually Google it and learn it on their own, right? Because they're never going to learn. Like you said, they're never going to learn in 40 minutes, everything there is. And I feel a lot of talks try to capture that. 
Uh, and most people are tuned out anyways. They're on their phone. They'll get like a Slack notification. And so they'll miss some key information. But if they watch it like a movie trailer, a uh, talk, they'll, they can zone in and out, uh, but they'll still know, you know what I'm talking about and where I'm leading them to so they can go home and learn themselves. Well, and they'll definitely spend the money. They'll, they'll spend the most valuable currency. They'll spend their time and yeah. they'll learn what this actually is by, by, by spending the time to get getting into it afterwards and picking up on themselves, but they had that little push. I love that. Do, do you mind if we just kind of touch on what uh, machine learning for everyone? I, I know we can't give away uh, your talk, but do you mind just telling us what, like a, a little bit of uh, what's going on in your talk? Oh, I, have, I have no idea. Uh, no. Uh, so, um, so what I'm going to be starting off the talk with exactly defining what machine learning is. There's a lot of um, unknowing around that, you know, people think it's deep learning, people think it's TensorFlow, uh, and just like throwing a bunch of neurons. So I'm going to kind of like distinguish where machine learning falls on this spectrum and, you know, really talk about that. You don't really need to know TensorFlow. TensorFlow is not machine learning. It's just a framework, just like Keras, a bunch of other frameworks. So, and what Google has done throughout the past three years is, you know, the, just like when programming was invented, you had deep academics building the foundations, right? Someone built a compiler. Like I have no idea how to build a compiler, but someone built that compiler. And then you have higher level programs. So machine learning has gone to that point where it's ex become accessible to everyone. And Google's kind of leading the way there. And so I'm gonna be talking about a lot of tools that you can use on Google Cloud to actually understand your data in a very visual way. Uh, rather than like trying to do all the stats calculations that a lot of tutorials have. And from that point on, I'll, you know, give some examples of different types of uh, machine learning techniques and then some resources on where they can go and learn more. I love that. I think a lot of people, when they think of machine learning, they either, the first thing they think of is the uh, Google achieving quantum supremacy, or they think of, um, you know, it's it's a big just if else then. You know, just yeah. just feed it a bunch of pictures of a cat and then a banana and say which one's the cat. But there there's there's so much more that goes into it, and I think that's you know, obviously it had to come from somewhere, but that's that's not where we're at now. We're we're really getting into a space where we could build some incredible things that really impact people's lives. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So. Um, Luani, why don't we talk about your presentation uh, a little bit? You, uh, and I'm getting to it in my notes here, you are speaking about creating real-time applications with Angular and Firebase. From, from what I've seen of, of your videos, this is right up your alley, so I'm excited. Um, so yeah, the, the idea of the presentation is just to showcase to the people that are gonna attend to, um, how you can be built, as the, the title says, the real-time applications. Um, so in, in Firebase, we have two types of databases. We have the real-time database, and we also have Firestore, which is kind of the, the newest database uh, that is in Firebase. And um, it's also a real-time database, such as the, 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 the other one that is called real-time database as well. Um, so Not the confusing. Idea... <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit confusing, but it's also real-time. Um, so the idea is to showcase uh, an Angular application. So there is a, sp a special package also developer by the Angular team that is called Angular Fire uh, that allows you to connect to, to Firebase through the Firebase SDK. But this library is especially for Angular. So everything you have, all the objects. And so it, it's ready to use in Angular. Um, and how exactly, how, how does that work? Why, why it is real time? So what happens behind the scenes that makes it work in real time? And also uh, do a demo about that. And um, after that, also go through some of the Firebase's, uh, the Firebase's uh, functionalities they are. So you can do authentication. So you can really develop a whole application just using Firebase as your backend. Um, of course, it's not gonna fit to every requirement. So, you know, you, you don't have a tool and <laughs> um, you have a hammer, so it, it's not like that. So depending on the application, you can also uh, actually use it uh, as to your backend. 
Um, so you have authentication, you have analytics, and something that they have, have added this year as well are the extensions. So there are a lot of plugins like hooks that you can also add to application to enhance even more the, the user experience, such as uh, resize images and do real-time translation. So there are a lot of cool stuff. Oh, that's interesting. So t tell me about the resize image thing. Um, so this is something that they have announced at the Firebase Summit this year. So there are extensions. So these are uh, special functions that are available in Firebase right now. You can also uh, add more. That There are tons that are available, but this is one of the most popular uh, ones that they have right now. So when you upload an image, so let's say you have an application and the user needs to upload an image and the image is very big. So you want to resize it to optimize it whenever the user sees the image again rendered in the application. So instead of writing the algorithm for that, because you could do that using uh, the Firebase Cloud functions that are available, uh, there is a special function that will do that for you. So you just pass the image and it's gonna return for you and it's also gonna persist that image into the Firebase uh, storage. Wow, so that's pretty, uh, it's pretty nice. That's just very automated. It's, it sounds like it's just setting up a few things here and there and then letting it go and letting it do the work. Yeah, um, I, I was actually able to, develop, I have a personal project uh, that I use for my YouTube videos as well. It's my training portal um, uh -huh. that I developed. It's kind of like a serverless application. It's an Angular application using uh, Firebase as the, the backend. And any additional logic that I need is also in Firebase functions. And um, it's very cheap as well. By the end of the month, you don't have to pay a lot. And um, this is really good, especially uh, for startups, so you're starting your MVP, you don't want to spend a lot of money on that, or you're starting your business. So there are um, a lot of great use cases that you can use this to start your application, see how it grows, and um, just use it. So it's really great. I love that. So why, why are you passionate about this uh, set of technologies specifically? Um, I'm, I'm also a Java developer, so, <laughs> um, so I'm used to working with Oracle, my SQL databases, my Microsoft SQL server. Um, so there are different set of technologies for different uh, products and uh, problems that we're trying to solve. And um, if you have a project that you don't really rely on heavy logic, especially on the back end, um, you can try and do with a serverless function, especially um, trying to follow that microservices hype. Um, so you can have your, your uh, functions over there for any particular logic that you need. And uh, if all you need is just read from the database and write to the database, that's a great technology stack for you to use. Well, that's so interesting. Okay, so it's, I'd imagine it's pretty easy to jump in if you, you know, if you know what you're doing a little bit, not for the, you know, someone brand new to it, but well, if if I was uh, new to using Firebase and uh, you know this is kind of the path I was going, what what would you tell me is like, hey, these are maybe like two or three of the things that you should know. Um, first thing, one thing when we talk about Firebase, um, people all, all, all always imagine that it's only a database, right? The real time database. Yeah, and exactly. That's it. Yeah, that's the first thing you think of. Yeah, but um, it, it's so much more than that, and. Um, all these functionalities that I just mentioned, authentication, the web hooks, there's also the analytics. So these are only for the, the web scope, right? So if you are using uh, iOS or Android, you can even go even deeper. There are even more functionalities for that. Um, so it's a very complete platform. And uh, you also have the hosting. So if you need to host um, a static, uh, web page. So it doesn't matter right now. I'm just talking about Angular, but it doesn't matter if you have just a static uh, JavaScript with HTML and CSS, or you have a React application or a view application. Uh, you can also leverage the hosting and the, which is free. And you also have the, the database behind you. And you can no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interject. How much did you say that was? Uh, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> you can start for free. <laughs> But the hosting is free and um, there are some different tiers. So the second tier is, I believe is $25 uh, and then pay as you go. So I also have the a pay as you go project um, right now. It's not a lot of users, 
Um, but I have like, it, it's, it costs me less than $10 a month. So I'm able to maintain a project for less than $10. So that's that's a great way to start your project or even uh, your business. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so you could, for, for basically nothing, you could really get started and have something. And like you said, um, you know, you, you might want to have a few things. We all have a few things that we want to test and see how they go. And then when they start getting traction, we add a little bit more complexity here and there, depending on the performance. So it, it's great to have something like that. Um, and it's interesting what you brought up about uh, Firebase. So what other, uh, what other technologies are you interested in, uh, by the way? Uh, I know Angular is, is really, from my understanding, your main thing, but is there anything else that you're like uh, very, you know what, I, I also dive deep into this as well. Um, so I really like Node.js, especially with Nest.js, which is a framework based on, on Angular. So it's a framework based on um, Express. Um, so you can easily, if you know Angular, you don't know anything about uh, server side, you know, backend, you can easily create an application as well using a lot of the Angular um, concepts there are. So like controllers, you have your modules, so everything that is in an Angular application, you can leverage in your backend. That's one thing and my other, a thing is also Java. So I'm very passionate about Java development as well, with especially with the Spring framework and all the reactive world there is out there right now. Mm, I love that. Well, we're we're probably uh, getting to the close to the end here. So I would like to before we talk a little bit more about what actually Defist is and talk more about the value. What would you tell people? Um, Loani, uh, is is the the key thing that they're going to get if, if you could you know put it up in a in a short uh, short statement. What what's the key thing that people are going to get from your talk? What are they going to um, walk if, away with? If you never heard about Firebase before, so that's a great opportunity for you to get to know the the platform, see what you can do, and. Um, as uh, Faisal mentioned as well, maybe you can go home later and if you are interested, Google it and try to learn for yourself. Maybe build your application and deploy it and start your business or even your personal project. I love that. And, you know, I, coming to the event and then getting to talk to both of you and, uh, you know, I'm sure both of you are not people that are uh, unapproachable. You know, you could actually come up and you could talk to the presenters get to know the speakers, ask them some questions, you know, hey, you spoke about this, about Firebase, you know, tell me a little bit more. These are real people. So we, we want you to come down, really be a part of the conference and uh, get get some real human interaction, shake a hand, talk, talk to somebody. So that's great. Um, let me uh, ask you, Faisal, uh, the same question. What are you hoping that people get from your your talks? What, what would you like them to walk away with? Um, just feel that this stuff is all achievable. A lot of people get this illusion that, you know, I'm so far behind or, you know, Firebase has been out for like three years. Why am I going to learn it now? Um, all this stuff is achievable if you just kind of spend some time on it. Right. Uh, so I hope people, you know, I, I learned this on my own and almost every developer learns stuff on their own. Right. So a lot of people get just hung up. So I just hope that they can know that. If you just spend some time, which is not a lot of time, it's like watching, instead of watching some Netflix every day, just spend some time on this and you'll be really good at it. I love that. That's great. But let me, let me start with, with you, Faisal, by saying this. What's the best way people could get a hold of you? And uh, what, What's your web address or, and or uh, Twitter handle? How, how do you want people to find out more about you? So to my Twitter, uh, DMs are always open. You can always tweet me, email me. Actually, if you go to my Twitter, there's on my bio, I blocked off some time every day, 5 p.m. EST to 6 p.m. If anyone ever wants to like come chat with me one-to-one, uh, -one, they can always just choose a time and just talk to me about whatever, uh, technology, movies, whatever they want. And so I'm always open that way. And, uh, or just email me at my full name, FaisalAbbott at gmail.com. I love that. That's great. I love that you keep that opportunity open for someone to reach out and actually have a, a real interaction with you. That's, that's, that's really nice. 
Um, uh, Loani, uh, how, how, how do people find out more about you? What would you like them to, uh, to go? Where would you like them to go rather? Um, you can also ping me on Twitter. Um, so I'm very, try to <laughs> sneak out <laughs> once in a while just to check my messages and also my tweets. Um, my Twitter is my name at Loyani. Uh, just ping me there. And uh, if you are at a dev fest, just come and say hi. I would love to know what you are working on, what technologies do you like. So we can talk a little bit, chat, maybe drink some coffee <laughs> and uh, get, get to know. I think that's the, the whole idea of a conference as well. Besides the, the, the whole technology is also connecting to other people and getting to know them. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah. And um, for, uh, again, people to look up DevFest, the URL is devfestflorida.org. Go there, check it out. Um, the conference is going to have uh, a, a lot of speakers. And this is, as I said earlier, talent from around the country, around the world, a lot of local talent. There's people like uh, David Korshid of the Keyframers. And if, if you live under rock and haven't watched that show, you need to, because it's amazing. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, Janelle Pizarro, uh, Lee Warwick, a lot of amazing people. And the conference itself is going to start at nine o'clock with like a, a morning coffee registration kind of thing, uh, kicking off welcome remarks at 930. And it's going all the way through until uh, five and then the after party at six. So come down. And uh, also we're going to be live at the conference all day. We're going to be interviewing uh, most, if not all, of the presenters all day. So come check us out. Uh, we'll have a little live area too, so you can ask some questions, raise your hands, and we'll uh, we'll have that interaction. So we'd love to see you come down there. So um, both of you, I, I, Faisal and uh, uh, Luani, I, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us, uh, especially again on such short notice. Really appreciate you spending some time here and uh, helping us educate uh, everyone, not only about your talks, but about the conference and um, promoting DevFest. Really, really appreciate it authentically. Cool. Glad to Thank you. On. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And again, DevFestFlorida.org. Come down, check us out November 16th. Really appreciate if you come down and be there. We'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.